Hello, everybody that's joining us. Can you just bear with me a second? We've got a few extra people just coming in at the moment, and then we will get started. So just bear with me a couple of seconds. Right, okay then, let's make a start. So hello everybody and welcome to the webinar tonight. <clears throat> First of all, I will say an apology because we did have the webinar last week and we had to uh, reschedule to this week because we had technical problems. Um, so we've rescheduled this. So apologies if you did log in last week. We will cover everything today anyway and we will send out a copy of this video, video afterwards. So if there's any bits you've missed or you want more clarity on, we'll send it out to you as well. Um, so as I say, thank you for joining us today. Um, today we will be talking about the Spanish Golden Visa, which is a really, really hot topic at the moment. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. I, whether people are aware of this or not, I, I don't know. But recently, Portugal has had changes to its Golden Visa program. So towards the beginning of uh, last year, Portugal removed property as an option, as a way of getting the Golden Visa. Now, Portugal was always really one of the favourable routes to get an EU, EU residency or EU passport. And the reason for that is the entry point with Portugal was 280,000. So 280,000 invested in property would get you EU residency. There were a number of caveats to that and then ultimately a EU passport. So it was a really popular way of doing it. Then in uh, February last year, it was announced that that would be withdrawn for a number of reasons. A lot of that was to do with the economy, to rising house prices. The government thought it had to make a stand and thought, OK, well, we've got to remove this because it's inflating um, prices. And so it was withdrawn. So as of about October last year, it's completely finished. The, the Portugal, in terms of property as an investment, doesn't exist anymore. There are other ways of getting the golden visa there, but it doesn't involve property. And property is always a very popular way of getting a golden visa because part of any sort of asset collection and any, any investment collection property plays a very important part. And furthermore, last year, Portugal had a number of changes in terms of um, the withdrawal of NHR, non-habitual residency, which is a preferential tax regime that it had. That's now been withdrawn. Um, there was a bit of scandal in the government and Antonio Costa resigned with the prime minister. So it's just had a bit of change to Portugal last year. So a lot of people are turning all eyes to Spain and the Spanish Golden Visa programme, not just for um, EU residency, but obviously also to get your residency in Spain, which is probably a reason that a lot of you have, is here. So my name's Sam Danes. I'm a senior wealth manager at Holborn Assets. Um, what on the, on, the, say on the front page here, just to, to take some notes for you, there's my um, telephone number and WhatsApp number there. Um, it's a UK number. I am based in Spain, but it's a UK number. So it's 0044-7969-059122. I suggest making a note of it because you can always WhatsApp me or, or message me with any questions that you have. Because obviously, if it's individual questions to yourself, I'm more than happy to answer and to help you. You've got my email, sam.danes at holbornassets.com. So please, please, please feel free to ask me any questions now or in the future to make a note of that. And uh, um, in an attempt to move along with technology, I've actually put a little QR code there. So if you've got your phone, I'll put it up at the end as well. And you scan that, you should be able to book an appointment directly into my diary. Now, I have got open appointments for the end of this week and into next week. It's all completely free. It doesn't cost you anything to have an appointment. I can go through your individual situation. If you are based in America or certain other parts of the world and timing's an issue and you want to have an evening appointment, it's no problem at all. If you if you use a QR link and it's not available, just drop me an email. I'm more than happy to sort of speak to you outside of hours with a Zoom call or telephone call. <clears throat> there is also other social media you'll find me on as well. Um, on YouTube, you'll find my channel there. If you put Sam Danes, expat financial advice, and I do lots of videos with regards to the Spanish Golden Visa. Um, so... That's about it for the, this part of it. So what I would do now is go into what we are going to discuss today. OK, so the agenda for today. So first of all, I'll give you a bit of background about Holborn Assets and Holborn Pass. So they're the two parts of the company here at Holborn. One, Holborn Assets, where we do a lot with investments. So particularly in Spain and other parts of the world, we give investment uh, advice, pension advice, all that sort of thing. And we have Holborn Pass, which I'll tell you a little bit about on the next slide. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do and why we are in front of you now talking to you. I'll talk to you a little bit about our residency by investment program. 
um, and how that works. We do residency by investment, not just for Spain. Uh, we do Portugal. Uh, we do Greece. We do Malta. We do USA, uh, St. Kitts, Dubai. We have an investment program and a residency program for all over the world. But I'm actually uh, based here in Spain, which I'll come on to. So I specialize in the Spanish Golden Visa. And as I mentioned before, it is becoming the most popular route really to EU residency, which I will speak to you about and tell you why. So I'll tell you about the Spanish Golden Visa program and what the process and the benefits of that program are. And there are many benefits of the Spanish Golden Visa and some very unique parts to the Spanish Golden Visa, which, again, make it a very popular route. And particularly for certain passport holders, it can be a very, very good route because it does offer some very unique and niche benefits. I'll give you um, section real estate opportunities because we can actually do the process for you in terms of getting your golden visa. And we have real estate options and what just give you a, a flavor of what sort of options are and what the costs are of doing it. Um, and then we've got a question and answer session. And I know some people have put forward some questions and I'll go through them. And if anybody else has uh, any questions, I suggest waiting towards the end, but pop any questions in there and I can um, I can go through the answers to them. So that is the agenda for today. So let's get started and tell you a little bit about Holborn Assets and Holborn Pass. So here at Holborn Assets, we are a global wealth management firm. So we started back in 1998. So we've been going, what, about 25 years, so a little over 25 years now. And we position ourselves all over the world. So we've got offices in uh, over 20 international offices. We have offices in the UK, offices here in Spain offices in Portugal, offices in Dubai, South Africa, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason we've done that is we're able to provide financial advice for our clients, not just where they are, but where they move to. So anybody watching this who is moving to Spain, as I say, we can do help you with the golden visa process and the investments to get you the golden visa, but we can actually provide financial advice when you're here in Spain as well. We are first and foremost a wealth management firm. And the wealth management firm is really to look at good investments for our clients. We're a British family firm. We've now got over, well over 500 employees located all around the world. I am based here in our Spanish office. So um, our Spanish office is in the Malaga region. So um, uh, near Porto Benus. Um, and I live in Soto Grande. So a little bit down the road from, from about half an hour from where the office is between between Marbella and Gibraltar is where I'm located. And I've, I've been here around six years now. Um, I sometimes go over to our Portugal office, which you can drive to in about four, four and a half hours. And as a company, we've got, we've got over 20,000 clients located all around the world as well. So we look after around two and a half billion in assets under management as well. So we're a very large financial advisory firm. Now, me, myself, I'm a qualified financial advisor. I started off in the UK. I worked for HSBC, Nationwide, Building Society, Wesleyan Assurance. And then I made the move over to Spain around six years ago. So I've been here around six years doing a similar job to what I was doing in the UK, but helping expats move abroad with financial advice and actually getting golden visas and getting their residency. So I've done it. I've been through the whole process. I've come over from the UK and I've had to go through the process of getting my residency visa. I know the problems that it entails going to the offices and getting everything done. Spain is a beautiful place to live. It really is a stunning place. Lovely, relaxed lifestyle. But it is quite difficult to get things done here. It's a little bit mañana, mañana, tomorrow, tomorrow. And there's lots of public holidays. So getting anything done does take a little bit longer and is maybe a little bit more difficult than some other places. So this is really why we're here to help you. But the story of Holborn Pass, Holborn Pass is, is something we set up uh, well over five years ago now. And the reason for this is a lot of our clients who were coming to us for investment advice and for pension advice and various other advice really wanted to know what other benefits they can get by investing money. And one of these benefits you can get by investing money is to become a resident uh, or a citizen of, uh, of a country and of a country to give you global mobility benefits to allow you the freedom of movement around Europe and outside of Europe in case you know in terms of the other schemes that we offer but where it works particularly well for us is that because we are first and foremost an investment company then for us investment is a priority we're looking to get people golden visas residency visas or passports but doing it in a way that we're looking at what is the best possible investment for you to achieve that goal not just getting you that visa, but making sure you've got the invest 
best investment to do that. And as part of this, we, we've actually done over a thousand applicants processed. A lot of these were for Portugal last year, which I mentioned before. Portugal was, oh, we had so many applications last year. We were the main provider of the Portugal Golden Visa last year. Um, we were just doing so many each month. But obviously that's now ended. And the first part of the issue, the amount of inquiries we're getting from Spain is, is phenomenal, really. It really is becoming popular. Um, Spain's always been very popular anyway as a, as a place to live. It's a beautiful place to live. But also there's a lot of benefits to the golden visa in Spain. Um, and we've had a hundred percent success rate. We've never had an application that's been to um, that, that's been declined. We know what we need to to do and to get together in order to get something approved. So we help people through every step of the process. We won numerous industry awards. Um, we've got an excellent rating on Trustpilot as well. Um, so that's who we are. <laughs> so hopefully that, that gives you a bit of a reassurance into what, why I am here talking to you uh, about what I am talking to you about. So if we go into a little bit about what we do before we talk about the Spanish Golden Visa itself. So the idea of our Holborn Pass service is to provide a full start to finish service for people looking to get the Golden Visa. So basically to make it as easy as we possibly can for somebody to go through the process where we would do all the work in terms of filling out the paperwork, going through the process. And here is a list of all the things that we do for, for people who are using us for the Golden Visa process in Spain. So we're assist with all the permit applications. In itself can be quite difficult, by the way, when you're trying to get the right pay paperwork for, for what you need doing. And we review all of these and we submit all these applications on, on our clients' behalf. So we do all of that. Um, we provide guidance on the real estate opportunities that are out there. So whether it's commercial or residential properties, any qualifying properties, we will look at um, what the best opportunities are and advise you of this. We do look very much at commercial properties, which I'll come on to in terms of the golden visa, because it is actually a lot of a, ch a lot cheaper as a way of getting <clears throat> the golden visa in terms of taxes, which I'll come on to. Um, what we'll also do is we can appoint a lawyer on your behalf. They can do all the due di diligence on the projects and the developers. Um, we negotiate with all projects and developers because we're such a big company. We're able to negotiate very good prices and good deals on particular um, uh, asset types as well. So we, we have that power, if you like, the buying power to help our clients. Uh, we're assist uh, with reviewing all the property records of any properties that you're buying. We're appointing the lawyers. Um, they do the sales agreements for you. Again, it's not something you need to worry about. We do all that. We assist you with the public deeds office. So getting the property record transfer done, getting your fingerprints done, your photographs done, all that at the government facilities. We will accompany you to that and help you get through that process. I had to do it myself. And it was quite tricky because I, I, I can speak a little bit of Spanish, but not very much. So you really do need help in navigating that side of it, which we would send somebody along to take you through that process and get that done. We can help you open a Spanish bank account. You don't need to be in Spain to do that. We, we set up a power of attorney and we can actually get that done for you, which you do need in order to get the golden visa, but that can be done by us. Um, we get your personal tax numbers as well. Um, and we assist you with the local tax representative as well and your residence permit to get that as well. Um, we collect your um, residency cards. We deliver them to you as well. We submit all the taxes on your behalf for any property as well. So you don't get involved in any of taxes. It's in your name, but we, we would do all the annual tax returns. We assist with all the properties, the ongoing rental, the renewal, the residence permit. And also, um, and also, if you want to actually change that to becoming a citizen, so for example, getting your passport, we can do all that for you. So long story short, or long story long in this case, um, we basically do a one-stop shop for anybody looking to use us. And it's to make the process as easy as possible and to make sure that you're not coming across problems which are very difficult when you're working on your own to, to overcome, particularly if you're using lots of different parties to try to get things sorted. It can be very confusing and very difficult. Right. So it, this, this is generally an overview, really, of how we expect a golden visa timeline to look like. So anybody looking to do the gold visa, and I put this in because we get so many questions about this. It's just a very estimated idea of the timescale of getting a golden visa in Spain. So the golden visa in Spain, one of the very good points about it is one of the quickest processes out of all the EU golden visa schemes. It's one of the quickest. Um, and the way it would basically work is the first month or two here, and again, I can send this to people who are interested, we actually would look at... Um, 
getting the asset for you. So basically getting the, the property that you need to get, um, getting the power of attorney done so we can open a bank account, getting your NIE number, which is tax number, um, doing you know, the, the asset searches on the property. So it normally takes around three months, you can see the curse here, three months to get that property bought, the deeds done and the deeds put into your name would normally take about three months. Once you've got the deeds in your name, you then make an appointment at the consular. And that's normally a one or two week wait. Okay. Once you've done that, you've got your appointment at the uh, consulate, you can submit your app application and you are then issued with the golden visa from the consulate. And this could be the consulate in your home country, or you can do come directly to Spain. It's quicker in Spain. You can do it again in your own, in your own country as well. Um, so, that will get you the golden visa, which is effectively going to be a mark on your, your, your passport, which effect, effectively gives you the right to live, work and travel through Spain and the Schengen area. So it gives you all the rights to the golden visa. But to actually get the physical card, so that's three to four months, to actually get the physical card, then you, we need to submit a residence permit application. You have to come to do your biometrics, such as fingerprints and, and various things um, and processing your TIE. And then that normally takes another two, three months, and then you're issued with your residency card, which is what I've got. So it's a card that has your photo on it. It's a little picture down at the bottom, just very blurred there, but that's what it looks like. Um, and you initially get that for three years, and then you renew it every five years. You get it for three years. After three years, you renew it. After five years, you renew it, and so on and so forth. You can just keep renewing it, basically, okay, for as long as you, you want to. Um, so that's a rough idea of the time scale. So really, it's three to four months to actually get you the benefits of the golden visa and around six, seven months to actually physically get you the golden visa. The Portugal scheme and some of the other EU schemes actually take a lot longer than that, a lot longer than that. So certainly from the, the golden visa point of view in Spain, it's a lot quicker, which, again, is a, a, is a plus point. So with regards to citizenship, citizenship and residency by investment, so just to make this clear and for people to understand the difference if you don't already know, citizenship and residency are very two, two very different things. So citizenship is effectively being a passport holder. So if you hold a passport, you're a, you're a citizen of that country, um, and it gives you all the rights, really, that, as if you were born in that country, so you're a passport holder. Residency program, which is really what Spain offers, is slightly different. You can convert residency to citizenship, citizenship after a certain period of time. But residency will give you very similar rights to citizenship. But basically, you're a resident of that country. So you have the right to, to live there, to work there. You have the right to, to move freely amongst the Schengen regions in the EU as well, the essential Schengen countries. You can do all of that. But it doesn't give you the right to vote. And there's various other things you can't do. But you have a right to the education, a right to, to the health care as well. Um, but residency can effectively turn into citizenship. Now, most countries in the EU don't offer citizenship programs. They're always, first and foremost, a residency program that can be converted to citizenship. Outside of the EU, countries may be more like um, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, Dubai, USA, some of these will offer straight into citizens, straight into becoming a passport holder. So anyway, so to become a citizen or a resident of a country such as Spain, you need to contribute something to that country's economy in order to get your golden visa or citizenship. And that could be in the form of real estate. It could be in the form of a donation. It could be in the form of a business. It can be a form of investment funds, investing in uh, investment funds or investing into government bonds. Now, some schemes such as Portugal, as I mentioned, have removed real estate as an option for the reason I've said. At the moment, real estate is still an option in Spain and is by far the most preferred way of someone getting residency. Because it's the lowest cost out of all the options and it's actually a good investment. You know, if you're looking at a donation, you have to physically pay a donation to the government. If you're looking at businesses, it's a lot more. Funds is a million. Uh, government bonds is two million. So it's a lot more money. Real estate's a lot less. Now, with regards to real estate, which I will come on to in Spain, you can invest in any type of real estate. It can be commercial or it can be residential. Now, in terms of actually doing an investment, so put my investment hat on, commercial is a lot better. Not in Portugal. Portugal, we would consider residential. But in Spain, it is better in terms of a lot lower taxes, which I'll come on to. Of course, you can do real estate, but a lot of people moving to, um, sorry, you can do residential, but a lot of people moving to Spain might not initially know where they want to move to. So the biggest mistake someone can make is move over to Spain, 
spend the minimum, which is 500,000 in order to get a property, pay all the taxes to move into that property, then a year later want to sell that property because they don't like the area or move elsewhere. To get this initial, which I'll come on to, but to get the initial um, investment and commercial opportunities really it can be very, very good. So as I mentioned before, residency by investment is in exchange for a contribution, you attain a residency permit that gives you the right to live and work in that particular country, okay, such as Spain. And that's what we're talking about, the golden visa. With regards to citizenship, that's in exchange for the same contribution. You could come at a citizen with full rights, including voting rights, et cetera, et cetera, and you hold a passport as well. So as I said, talking about Spain, you could start out as a resident, and then after a certain period of time, you can change that into becoming a citizen. Now, these are the different citizenship and residency programs that we offer. Okay, so we offer, oh, sorry, excuse me, but right, so we offer citizenship programs in Antigua, St. Lucia, Dominica, Granada, St. Kitts, Vanuata, Malta, and Turkey. And as you can see, these are, which I won't concentrate on today, these give you the time to become a citizen, so the time to become a passport holder here. Now, these are the minimum investments, et cetera, et cetera. But as I say, we're not looking outside of Europe now. We're looking now inside Europe, which is going to be the best option uh, for people looking to become an EU resident. So here, the, the, the residency programs in the EU, really, we've got Malta, Portugal, Greece, not the USA, but that is a residency program, Spain and not UAE, obviously. So these are the, 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 the options you have within Europe. Now, looking here at Spain, so just going over some of the, the basics here. So with Spain, a little bit longer than the other schemes. It's 10 years before you can change your golden visa to a passport. Now, to get it, make it clear, a lot of people won't necessarily want to change their golden visa to a passport. The, the passport doesn't particularly offer a lot more, which I will come on to, than what the golden visa does anyway if you're going to be living in Spain. But you have to wait 10 years to change it. Whilst in Portugal, as I mentioned before, it's actually only five years, which made Portugal quite popular for people looking to get a passport. There is a caveat with Spain that you can get your passport within only two years, far quicker than any other scheme, if you have a certain, you are a certain passport holder. So if you are a passport holder of an ex-Spanish colony, which I will come on to the list of countries that are ex-Spanish colony, and there are a lot of them. So if one of you, it doesn't have to be all of you on the application, but if one of you has a passport, this is an ex-Spanish colony, you can convert your residency into citizenship in only two years, which makes it absolutely brilliant as a scheme if you are watching this and you do have that. By far better than any other scheme that is out there. Now, in terms of the minimum investment option, so in Portugal is no longer 280,000. This is an older slide from last year. It's actually 500,000. But in Portugal, you have to be into an investment fund, which makes some people aren't so keen in investing in investment fund due to risk and various things such as that. People like property. Well, with Spain, it's 500,000. That's the minimum investment into property to get a golden visa. However, we have introduced a unique scheme whereas you can actually qualify for as little as 350,000. Obviously, that's still a lot of money, but it's a lot less than the 500,000 minimum. And the way we do that, the minimum is still 500,000, but we have certain developments, certain properties where we can pay rental income up front. So for example, we have somebody invest in 350,000 and we will pay 150,000 rental income up front to create the 500,000. So that gives people a lower entry point for people that maybe don't have the 500,000. And furthermore on that, we actually offer a guaranteed buyback for the 350,000 as well to eliminate the risk side of it. So it's a really, really popular scheme. We've had loads of people looking at it just in the last three weeks and actually applying for it. It's a really, really good scheme for people that are looking for a lower entry point. And I'll talk a bit more about that later in the presentation. Um, so... In terms of tagging people onto your application, you can tag your children on up to the age of 18 and even over the age of 18, as long as they are dependent and we can prove that they are dependent. So, for example, they're in university, they're in school or they're living at home. As long as we can prove the dependency, you can have a 22 or 23 year old on there. We know what we need to have in order to do that, but they can all tag on to one person's application. You can tag on your spouse. And you can tag on your children and you can even tag on your dependent parents as long as they're 65 years and over, over. So as part of one application, 
you can have lots of people joining that application so that you can have golden visas for everyone. And that means the right to work, the right to live, the right to the healthcare, the right to the schooling. All of that will be included in one person's application. So really, really, really good scheme, the Spanish one. Not all other schemes will have that as well. You get visa-free travel to all the Schengen countries, to 187 different countries here in Spain. Um, and there's a little bit more information. It's Spain has actually got the fifth, uh, ranked the fifth best passport in the world in terms of the passport strength. So a really good scheme, the Spanish scheme. There's lots of more information on there, but we're concentrating on the Spanish one. And as I say, a lot of that is because the Portugal one has been withdrawn in terms of property. So why would we look at Spain compared to, say, Portugal and some of the other countries? And I imagine a lot of you are here because you've been to Spain or you love Spain because you've, you've, you know, you've maybe lived here yourself for a period of time. You've holidayed here or you've just seen it. Spain is a lovely place to live and it is ranked first country in the world for the quality of life. And I can verify that for living here. It's very laid back, far less pressure than, say, for the UK. Not only that, obviously, you have the weather. I'm in the south of Spain here in the Malago region. So we look out towards uh, literally from the beach just over, just across um, uh, on the road here. You can see uh, Morocco. It's lovely. It's hot pretty much all year round. That's why it's Costa del Sol, the coast of the sun. Um, it's the second most visited country in the world by international tourists. Most people have been to Spain. It's got a great culture, very rich history, rich culture here. It's the fourth biggest economy in the EU and 14th in the world. And you, you notice that here as well. A lot of people ask me about the job situation and the general economy here and the house prices. It's really built up. Uh, it had a recession here, as many other countries did. But it's really picked up in, a, in the last sort of four or five years, particularly. And there's so many new businesses open. There's lots of jobs being offered. It's a very, very... You can you can really see Spain as a country buzzing, which may be you know, similar to a lot of countries who hit recessions a while ago. Spain's really coming out of this strong as well. Spain's the fifth uh, best country in the world to live in. Uh, sixth best retirement um, destination in 2023's annual global retirement index would make sense. The healthcare here is fantastic. The weather's fantastic, which is great, obviously, for people who maybe it's health isn't as good. Um, my wife's parents live over here for that reason. They've got great health care here. And obviously the heat, I think, really sort of eliminates a lot of a lot of illness as well. Um, and leading on for that, yeah, the seventh best public health care system. So a really strong public health care system, which you've qualified for on the Golden Visa. So many reasons why Spain. And if you look on the map there, obviously, you can see it's in a great location. As I say, you can drive here to Portugal in around... Four hours via Seville. So you go here up to Seville, across the border. There's no there's no passport control, anything like that at the border. You just drive straight across. There's no stamps on your passport. You literally just go in and out. And obviously, you can go to France, the other end as well, um, and then into Italy. So it's, it's just a fantastic located country as well. So a little bit about the Spanish Golden Visa then. So the, the, the Spanish Golden Visa started back in 2013. So it's been going for what, 11 years now. And it is, it's done incredibly well. It's been really, really popular. And even so now, it's even more popular. Now, I'm going to say at this point, and people need to be really aware of this, the synergy between Portugal and Spain being such to the close neighbours, you cannot quite often see what can potentially happen in one country based on what's happening in the other country. Now, we fully expect that the golden visa scheme in Spain will be withdrawn not withdrawn in its entirety, but withdrawn in terms of the property options similar to Portugal. And the reason for that is there's already murmurings in the government. The new government's come in um, last year. Um, some of the minor governments and the minor um, opposing parties have already raised this as an issue, saying that the, the economy and the rising house prices is making it very difficult for people to buy over here. Now, one of the first things the government will do when they look at things like that is to look at external schemes, if you like, like the Golden Visa scheme. It's been under scrutiny in a number of different countries because it's basically letting people in and paying for all the benefits that somebody being born has and, and inadvertently is rising the house prices, <clears throat> making it the economy worse. So it's a really good voting uh, tool, if you like, for any government to say, OK, we're going to tackle the Golden Visa, the, the house problems via the Golden Visa. So we expect in the next year or two, maybe even sooner. It was announced very quickly in Portugal, almost overnight. We just didn't see it happening. And that may well happen in Spain. So anybody thinking of the Spanish Golden Visa, please be mindful of that. Don't leave it too long if you're going to do it, because 
and we've had this with Portugal. People have left it too late and they're coming to us now because they just could put it off and put it off. If you're if you're thinking of doing it and thinking of serious for it, have a have a you know have a chat with me, um, find out some more information. But 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 yeah, but be aware of that. Um, Spain so far have had over 9,000 approved golden visa applications, which has raised over 3.5 billion. So you can see what that 3.5 billion, the majority of that was for the golden visa and property, would have done to the house prices in Spain. And house prices in Spain really have, have rocketed as well. Now, this is a key to Spain. It makes it very unique, very, very unique amongst pretty much all the other golden visa schemes. There is no not time that is needed to be spent in Spain to have the golden visa. So once you buy your asset, so you buy your asset for the 500,000 or the 350,000 option, which I'll come on to is one option. Mm -hmm. You have that asset, that gives you the golden visa. You have your golden visa card, you have the right to come and go as you like, to work, to live, to retire here, to travel freely, visa free amongst the Schengen countries with your gold visa card. You don't need to spend any time in a year here in Spain. And if I link that back to what I said at the beginning of this slide, if you think about it, if it's something you're thinking of doing and you have the money, even if you're not planning say, to move over to Spain for another three or four years, looking at getting something now will give you the golden visa and it will give you that right to come and go as you want in preparation for four or five years time. You don't need to be coming over to Spain. So it's something you can look at sooner without actually having to commit yourself to moving here, which is what a lot of people do. They get the asset, either as an investment or to get themselves a golden visa. They sit on that for a number of years until they eventually make the move and come over and live. Um, so no, no time is needed in Spain. Any non-EU citizen can apply. You've got to have no criminal record. You can have a minor offences will be considered. But, but you know, generally speaking, you, you, know, you have to have no criminal record. As I mentioned before, you can include your spouse, your children, and your parents over 65. Children, they say age 18, but as I say, older is accepted as long as they're dependent. Parents over 65, um, as long as they're dependent, uh, is fine. And obviously your spouse, who, who presumably you'd want to take as well. Um, so that, that's the Spanish Golden Visa. The benefit to the Spain Golden Visa is you have the right to live and work in Spain. And, that, you know, obviously I do that myself fantastic country to work and that's probably why most people will look to the spain golden visa but you can also freely travel and stay with all the all of the 26 schengen countries so you can travel across and you can stay in there you don't need to be filling out any visas as i say when you go to places like portugal or france it's not a border you just go straight well there is a border but you just go straight in you don't show your passport it's very it's very free movement uh, here as well you can establish a business in all of the schengen countries too um, you get five years tax exemption for expats. I won't go into too much detail about that, but as I say, we are financial advisors here, so we can advise on that. But there's things such as the Beckham's Law for people that are not familiar with in terms of depending on where your, your income is earned, you can get a lower rate of tax. But again, I won't go into that, that but that is a discussion we can have as well. Um, we do have tax advisors that can help people who are thinking of moving over if they are going to use us. You have access to the world-class free healthcare. So it's ranked seventh by the world um, health organization and also you'd be part, part of the pension scheme as well so you, you're effectively getting all the rights as if you know you are a citizen here in spain and a few myths and facts about the spanish golden visa for anybody watching here okay and it's only because i've asked these questions some of these you might already know but it is worth just bear in mind it might sort of break some of the some of the thoughts that you may have so the first one i've already answered you know you have to spend time to maintain your residency. No, there is no minimum stay requirements in Spain once you have your golden visa. You will have to make a visit, and that would be to get your biometrics um, and things such as that, but that's really just can be an in and out, you know, in for a week and, and get that done, which, you know, is not the worst place to come to for a week. But once you've got that golden visa, you are free to, to, to come and go. You do not have to stay at all. Only residential real estate qualifies. No, any type of real estate, commercial, residential, parking spaces, any type will qualify. As I said, we look particularly at commercial assets. Um, from an investment perspective, it's definitely the best option if you're looking for a good investment. Later on, you might want to just change that to a residential property you live in, uh, which is fine. But at that point, it's the commercial asset could be a really good way of generating an income or just getting you that golden visa with very low ongoing costs compared to residential and then can be changed to residential at the point you want to know, you know, you know where you want to live. Um, you've got to buy one property at 500,000, not at all. You can buy a number of properties as long as they total 
500,000. Any property bought after 2013 will qualify. Any property before 2013 won't. Um, there are limitations in where you can invest. No, you can invest anywhere in Spain, including the Balearics and the Canary Islands as well. Um, the process is long and vague. No, it's the fastest process amongst all the EU programs. The residency is actually issued within 21 days of submission. The, what takes the time is actually getting all the, the paperwork and everything done to get the asset that you need, to the commercial, the residential asset. That takes the time. But once you've actually got the asset, the actual um, submission program is very quick. It does say 21 days. In reality, with Spain, you'll know there's quite a lot of uh, holidays here in Spain. Um, you know, you can, you know, August is incredibly slow in terms of getting things done, things such as that. But, but generally speaking, 21 days is what you'd expect. The Spanish program is expensive, not at all. Um, so aside from the investment that you make, so that initial investment, so it could be as little as 350,000, the additional costs are minimal. So to get your TIE, which is your tax number, it's about 73 euros. To renew your um, uh, golden visa, unlike the Portuguese scheme, where it can be very, very expensive, it's a lot, lot cheaper. You know, you're talking hundreds, not, not thousands of euros to do that once every five years. Um, you have to live in Spain for 10 years to qualify for citizenship, so to qualify for your passport. No, you can get it within two years if you have the ex-Spanish colony, which I will come on to who they are. So that's some of the, the myths and facts about Spain, just to sort of clarify that. So this is the Spanish passport. Okay, so we're talk this is about getting your passport, so becoming a passport holder. So you might not want to do this. You might be happy just to have your Spanish golden visa. Okay? You don't need to change it for a passport. But if you are an ex-Spanish colony, you can get your golden visa within two years as opposed to 10 years if you're not. Now, ex-Spanish colonies, I will read them out. There might be one or two missed on here, but it's basically Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Equatorial Guinea, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, the Philippines, Uruguay, and Venezuela. And in addition, Andorra and Portugal. But there wouldn't be much point with Andorra or Portugal because you already have the EU passport anyway. So there's a lot of countries on there. And if any anybody watching has one of these passports or even knows of people who has, who, who might be interested, it's a brilliant scheme. Within two years, you can have an EU passport to, to basically live and work anywhere in the EU with a passport. So to get your passport, you have to have a B2 language level test, a relatively basic uh, language level test. So it's not very difficult. If you lived in the country for a while, you should probably be able to do that anyway. Cultural exam. So it's very similar to any, any place, really. And you've got to live in Spain for the two years if you're an ex-colony. So if you are an ex-colony and you want a passport, as I mentioned, ex-Spanish colony, you have to live for more than six months of them two years in Spain to convert it to the passport, okay? If you are not ex-Spanish colony, you have to wait 10 years to get your passport. Now, if you do want to change your residency to a passport, in the last five years, you need to spend more than six months a year in the country to prove that you want to live here, okay? And that would then get you um, your, your passport. Okay, so bear that in mind. A lot of people don't really want to change over to the passport, but obviously if you do, then, then be mindful of that. As I mentioned, the Spanish passport is the third best passport in the world. So it's a really strong passport. The passport will give you many, many benefits in terms of entering other countries, such as America, etc. So you can travel up to 190 countries visa-free with a Spanish passport. But as I say, you know, and, and live and work, as I say, anywhere in the EU. So you can move around, not, not just move around visa-free to the Schengen areas. You can just move around, live and work wherever you like with the EU passport. It's a fantastic passport to have. So the investment options with regards to Spain, excuse me. So, as I mentioned, first of all, you can do real estate for 500000 By far, the most popular way in. <clears throat> as I said before, commercial real estate is the way that we would look at for a lot of people, for the reasons that I will mention. But you can do equity in a business, which is a minimum of €1 million, Euros, a bank deposit or investment fund, um, at least €1 million, Euros, and then government bonds, €2 million. Euros. Uh, probably the least popular way of doing it. Um, so as I say, I mean, you're talking 99%, 98% of people will be doing real estate as the investment. And this is why I mentioned before, be mindful of the fact when real estate goes, the entry point into Spain could be difficult because of the other entry points are quite high. Unless they're changed, it could be difficult for people. So 
Let me talk a little bit about the options that we have in terms of real estate. So let's talk a little bit about commercial versus residential. I really want to make sure this is clear for people watching. Okay, So this seems a little bit confusing. This, so, so let me explain. You've got commercial asset here. So this is your traditional 500,000 commercial investment that we can offer. We have a 350,000 option, which I just mentioned, which is the cheaper option, which is what we call the lease back option. Okay. And we can also offer a residential option. So this is basically a potential second home or somewhere you rent out. Now, obviously, a residential option you can technically do on your own. You can find a property for 500000 and buy that, and that will qualify you. But I'll come on to why that might not be the best option for a lot of people is what we find. So the commercial asset. So first of all, if you buy a commercial asset in Spain, you have lower transfer taxes. So they're traditionally around 15 to 2.5%, depending on the area you're buying in. Now, we tend to concentrate on Madrid and Barcelona because the investment opportunities, commercial opportunities are the best and the taxes are the lowest in them places. Um, it's slightly lower in Madrid than it is in Barcelona, but they're, they're very similar. But, but this is a lot less than you would pay on residential, which I'll come on to. Also, you have long-term leases on commercial assets. The tenants of an asset will cover most of the expenses, so you don't cover most of the expensive. Now, in terms of the transfer taxes being lower on a commercial asset, this is compared to 8 to 11.5% on the residential asset, which means on a 500,000 investment, you will save at least in the region of 40,000 euros in taxes by looking at commercial as opposed to looking at residential. Okay, That makes it a far more attractive investment if you put your investment at all. Furthermore, on a um, commercial property, so this is a 500,000 commercial property, you'd expect a rental yield of around four, it's actually as high as, high as 6%, but okay, four to 5%, let's say roughly is what you're going to expect as an, an average rental yield. Okay. What we do, by the way, I will say is we, we would do a full management package on commercial. So we do everything. As I mentioned at the beginning, we do everything to the filing tax returns, pointing the lawyers, doing everything, due diligence, everything on these assets. We do it and look after it for you. And you would get a rental yield of 4.5% and your golden visa, which we would do for you. But as I say, in reality, this is saving you 40,000 compared to a commercial uh, compared to a residential asset. Also on a residential asset, you are looking at an average rental yield of 2 to 3%. So it's really around half percent rental yield of what you're going to get on a commercial asset. So commercial assets have a higher rental yield. So if you're going to take off, if you're going to put your business hat on, your commercial business hat on here, that if you are not sure where you're going to live in Spain, so you don't know where you're going to live or you might not be moving over here for a few years, one of the biggest mistakes you can make, as I mentioned before, is to come here and think, OK, I'll buy this place to live. It's going to cost me 500000 I'm going to pay all these taxes on it and I'm going to eventually live there. I might rent it out for a while, for a year or whatever, and then I'm going to live there. Well, you're going to get a lower amount of rent. And then when you move there, if you don't like that property and you ultimately want to move somewhere else, you then have paid the tax. You're then going to have to repay tax again when you move to the new place. So you're, you're costing, it's costing yourself a lot more. What we would suggest for a lot of people is look at a commercial asset to basically give you the golden visa. We call it basically a compliance asset. That gets you your golden visa, gets you some income coming in. It can be fully managed for you, so you don't have to, to worry about it. And then once you've decided okay, I know I want to live in Seville, for example, you then, because you can rent in the meantime, rent until you know where you want to go. And then you've got that asset, you can sell that asset, buy your residential asset, and know that's where you want to be and to save yourself a lot in taxes because the taxes in Spain can be quite high. So that's what you need to be aware of, okay? So that is that is why we look at commercial. As I say, the last point in here is it's a rational investment decision. You know, people like to see a house and, oh, I want to buy that because I want to live there. You, you've got to get out of that for a little bit when you're looking at things like the golden visa because you need to make sure you're not going to end up costing yourself a fortune in taxes. So the idea of commercial is saving yourself 40,000, getting near double the rental yield certainly seems more attractive. As I say, we can help people look for residential buy to lets as well, we can do. It's just us putting our, our investment hat on for people. We would certainly look at commercial unless you know exactly where you're gonna go and where you wanna live.
Now, the, the, the other option, the one in the middle, and I will, it's a little bit more, I think it's on the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Anyone that is interested in this, please just book an appointment, have a chat with me. It's all completely free. I can go through it with you and I can talk you through exactly how it works, that sort of thing. But generally, the way it works is we offer a, a buyback option, a guaranteed buyback option. So effectively, you have to spend 500000 in order to get the golden visa on a commercial property. But instead of you paying the 500000 you pay 350000 Now, there is other costs. There'd be the legal fees for taxes. So it will be a little bit more than that. You know, it could be around 370 something around that when you include all the taxes of moving and the lawyer solicitors. But that's, that's just giving you a rough guideline. But essentially, it's 350000 You are immediately paid 150000 which is the equivalent of 10 years rental income up front. And that's a rent, that was 3% a year, basically. Okay. That would be the equivalent of 10 years rental income up front paid immediately. So you have an asset worth 500,000. Um, and then at the end of the 10 years, we offer a guaranteed buyback. Now the guaranteed buyback is for 350,000, basically the amount you invested, not for the 500,000. But you don't have to exercise a guaranteed buyback option. And I'll come on to that. What you can do is you can keep hold of the investment and just carry on getting an income from it. Or alternatively, uh, instead of ex in exercising the buyback of 350,000, what most people would do is just sell it on the open market. Because if it was initially worth 500,000, then at the end of 10 years, the likelihood it's going to be worth a lot more than that. So you're probably better to sell it on the open market. But the good thing about it is if there was some global disaster and house prices crashed and died, which is very unlikely, you'd know that you'd at least get your money back at 350,000. It gives you that peace of mind. So that's what it's designed for. Now, the reason it's effectively 3% upfront as opposed to 4 and 5% you could get if you do the 500,000 option, it's a fully managed package. So it means basically all taxes are paid on your behalf. There's no taxes for you to pay. There's no um, upkeep, whether it's rented or not. The asset doesn't matter to you. You've already been paid it upfront. That is the worry of us and of the, 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 the letting agents, um, uh, the agency looking after it, not of, of, for you. So it really is just to take the stress out and give you a compliance asset. So it's a bit more restrictive than the 500,000 option because the idea is you keep it for 10 years. You can get out of it early and have a guaranteed buyback, but it's less than 350,000 because you've been paid the 150,000 up front. So that's giving you a rough idea. So basically, left-hand side, 500,000 option. The middle one, 350,000 option. The final one is residential, which is more expensive, but can also be an option as well. So this is an example of a 300,000 lease back option. So as I've said before, 500,000 is, is, is made into a commercial property. And we look at properties in Barcelona and Madrid. Our options change all the time. So we have options on the books. We would show you the options if you're looking to go ahead and you would choose which one you like. But essentially, it doesn't matter too much because you're going to get paid 150,000 up front, whatever one you choose. The property would be in your name. The commercial property would be in your name. We'd file all the taxes on your behalf, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we would pay you 150,000 up front, the equivalent to 3% per year for 10 years, which gives you the total investment of 500,000 with you only paying 350,000. Once you've got that and you've done that, we then, so it takes about two to three months to get that commercial asset. Then we apply for the golden visa for you. Well, you sorry, that's part of that process. We get the golden visa. So three to four months, you'd have the golden visa and the property. And then we would get you the residency cards. And that's the point. You'd have to come over and do your biometrics and everything. Um, the sort of units we look for, they change all the time. I just had a look at ones today. We've actually got, I think, a bar. We've got a, um, a restaurant on there, a shop as well. But basically, it's things such as um, catering, retail offices. Some are up and running already, and they've, they've already got tenanted. Other ones are distressed properties that we think are really good investment opportunities. So it depends what, what people are after and what we have on the books. But that's the sort of thing we look at. So a really good investment opportunity for people that ha want to pay less to get the golden visa. 500,000, if you have that money, that's fine. That's more flexible. But the 350,000 gives you that option. So as I say, after 10 years of the 350,000 um, option, you can exercise a buyback. So you're guaranteed to get your 350,000 back. Come rain or shine, you'll get that money you invested back and you'd have had the golden visa. So it's a win-win. Option two is you sell to the open market at the going rate. As I say, if the investment was originally worth the 500000 in 10 years' time, you expect it to be worth a lot more. That would probably be the option you'd want to go for, but you've got the 350000 buyback just to give you peace of mind. Or option three, you maintain ownership of it and just keep that then as an income because you'd have paid the 150000 already been paid to so you, then can start to keep that rental income on a monthly basis. 
if you want to get out of it before year 10, you have buyout clauses here, guaranteed buybacks for certain amounts, depending on how long you hold it. You can actually get out of it earlier than year five, but it, it becomes complicated. Then we would have to do calculations and work out how much you've been paid, how long you've held it for. So this, this option is more restricted, but really good if you're looking just for a holding asset, low entry point with no risk. 350 odd thousand option is really good. <clears throat> the other option is you go for the 500,000 commercial option. And that is far more basic. This is an example of one. This is actually a 600,000 property um, that we did. It's called Bipolar. It was a little restaurant. Uh, this was in Madrid. Um, the rent income on this is about 3,050. So I think near the five and a half, six percent mark. So really good income. And anyone doing the 500,000 option, we do the same thing. We'd offer a full management scheme. Because you wouldn't have the rental in income up front, you would then just be paid that every month. So if, you, for example, you want that commercial asset to have an income, passive income coming in, you can do that as well. We we'll source out the best opportunities. We negotiate, get the best prices for them, put it in your name, sort it all out as well. So that's uh, the 500,000 option. So you have an option of, of the two. So these are the two options. So that that's really, I say, coming to the end of the presentation. I've got some questions that I will go through as well. What I will stress on this is, you know, Everyone's situation is really different and, and it's really hard to get your head around sometimes all these different points I've gone through. So I put that little QR code. So to feel free to book yourself in, scan it with your phone now, <clears throat> book it. But if, it, if it's sort of slightly odd times you want or even in appointments, it's really no problem. Just send me an email or a WhatsApp or a, a text um, and we can book you in. I really don't mind sort of speaking to people in the evenings if it's more convenient as well. Um so just to go through some questions that I was asked before. So we had people putting questions in before um, we came on there. So just to run through these. So first one was, what conditions for buying a 500,000 property? Does it have to be debt free? Yes, is the answer to that. Well, yes and no. The property can't have any debt on it. Okay, so it can't be mortgaged or it can't have a bank loan on it. Does that mean you can't have gone and got loans to have got you the money elsewhere? Well, no, because no one's really going to do a credit check on you to see where you have loans. It just can't be leveraged on the property that you're buying. So technically, you could be lent the money, but bearing in mind, officially, you cannot do that through a mortgage or a bank loan on the property. So if that makes sense. So you can have loans, but that money would have to be paid 350000 or 500000 of your own money. Okay, next question. Visit flexibility. Tax resident status and healthcare associated with a golden visa. It's a five hundred thousand per couple. Yes, the five hundred thousand or the three hundred fifty thousand is only what is only once. You only pay that for the one applicant, and then you can tag everybody else onto that application. So your children, your partners, all onto that one three hundred fifty thousand or one five hundred thousand. In terms of flexibility, you don't have to stay in a country, as I mentioned before. You can you can come and go or stay zero in a year. You still keep holding your gold visa. You don't lose it. There's no minimum stay requirements. Thus, if you're not staying here over half a year, you're not tax resident and you won't have tax obligations for Spain anyway. So even if you do spend part of the time over here, if you spend less than six months, you're not tax resident in Spain. Um, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't pay your taxes here anyway. But as I say, you don't have to stay here at all as well. And if you have the gold visa, you do qualify for the healthcare um, as well. So you do qualify for healthcare here in Spain. So it's really, really good from that point of view. The flexibility on the Spanish gold visa is brilliant. So can the family member buy the Spanish property, 500,000, put in the property name of the gold visa applicant only? So yeah, you, a family member can essentially give you the money, but it would have to go to you into an account in your name because we open a Spanish account on your behalf. So we get power of attorney. We get that for you, open you a Spanish bank account, and then you need that 500000 paid into your Spanish bank account. So you technically could get that from family, um, but the money couldn't be bought by the family, if you see what I mean, because it has to come from you in your name. With the golden visa, can I come and go as I please, or do I need to spend a certain amount of time each year? Oh, as I've answered that, then no, you can come and go as you please. That's the great flexibility with that. There's no minimum stay. I think Portugal has a week two week or two weeks every year. Spain just doesn't have anything, which is so unique for a, uh, for a scheme. Taxes and what is the likelihood of the goals of visa scheme getting abolished because of the new politics? 
With taxes, as I mentioned, taxes is something we can advise on if you're using us. You're going to use one of commercial properties. We partner with Orients, who are one of the leading um, experts in the Spanish Gold Visa. They've been going since the start of that. They've got in-house tax advisors as well that we can actually help on meetings, you know, as well to help you with that. But essentially, if you're not going to stay in Spain, you're not a tax resident in Spain. You've got to spend more than half a year to be a tax resident. So you can be a resident without being a tax resident, if that makes sense. You can be a Gold Visa holder, a Spanish resident. But you're not a tax resident unless you're spending half a year here as well. And about the golden visa scheme being abolished, yeah, you've really got to bear this in mind. You know, I think there is a chance the golden visa scheme will be abolished. And what it will be at some point, uh, certainly with property, and the politics will play a massive part in that. So be aware of that because, you know, if it's something you're interested in, you have no minimum stay requirements. If you do have the money and you think about doing it, you can do it now have this as an investment and get your golden visa and then move over here in two, three years' time. It's perfect for people looking to do that. Um, the money requirements for the visa program, I think I've covered that. So 350,000 is a minimum that we can do, but that's unique to us. There's nobody else offering that. Um, or 500,000 again is an option. If I get the golden visa for a 500,000 property purchase, am I then taxed as a permanent resident of, um, if I stay in Spain, less than 180 days? No, you won't be taxed. No, you won't. So as long as you're not spending over half a year here, we've got people doing that, you know, to get the golden visa so they can come and go in the Schengen area and, and not stay more than half the year in Spain. So it's perfect, really, to, to move around. So, um, we've got a number of applicants going through at the moment with that, with, with that idea in mind. Um, how much is the investment to buy in Spain? So I said, OK, we've answered that. Is it a one-time payment or monthly payment? It is a one-time payment. There's a schedule of payments. So normally when you've chosen a property you want, you normally pay a 10,000, which holds that property for you. Paperwork's done, legal fees are paid, and money is released in different sections over that three months. But give or take, it's not, it's, it's installments, but, but over a short period of time. So you do have to have that money. It can't be, it can't be spread over a year, for example, as well. Okay. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, so it's pretty, is it possible to switch from a digital visa to a golden viva? Is yes, can it go visa? If yes, can it be done anytime? Yes, I believe it can. We've had somebody ask us this. Uh, we don't get too many of these, as you can imagine. But yeah, that is possible. What what we would do, if it's something you're interested in, we can book an um, appointment with Orients as well. Orients, I keep mentioning Orients. Ori we work with Orients because Orients, when we've come into doing the Spanish Gold Visa, Orients were the, basically the complete experts in the field. They've done more than anybody else in Gold Visa. So they actually have people set over up in Barcelona and Madrid that help with the property, look at sourcing the properties for us and on our behalf. And we do that as well. Um, and we can get them on a call as well. And they can sort of go through exactly what the process is in terms of uh, switching. Um, but yeah, it, it absolutely is. As long as you have the qualifying Golden Visa amount, then it'd be a slightly different paperwork, but it will be um, simple. Uh, so if a couple buy a property for 500,000 plus and it's registered in both names, if one of the couples apply for the Golden Visa, will it be approved? Will his share be considered as 250 and be denied because he's... No, no, no. So, no, no. So basically when you buy a property, it doesn't matter how you structure that, okay? So you can structure it in any way you want. So you have a main applicant. We normally say who's the main applicant. Um... But you would both be approved. It would all be done as one application. So when when we what happens is if anybody's interested in doing it, we get the um, copies of the passports of everyone that you want on the application. We get your address and everything like that. We prepare the paperwork and not everything is done to put everyone onto that application. So it is only one five hundred thousand you need, and it would be registered for for the both of you, and you would both qualify, and you would both meet. The consideration it wouldn't be split into two or two hundred and fifty thousand. So hopefully that answers that. So all I will stress is if if there's not enough detail on some of them answers or you want more um more um uh if you've got any more questions, sorry, please, please, please scan yourself in, book an appointment. It doesn't hurt to ask the questions to the, and to speak to someone about it. As I say, we've got lots of experience with this. We've had so many applications recently in this last sort of three weeks. It's It's been ridiculous. Um, as I say, scan that QR code, book yourself in. As I say, the, 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 it's available because well, I'm in Spain, obviously. So when you look at that diary, you'll probably find it's nine till five in terms of availability. But I am fully aware if you're in America, that can make it quite difficult. So I'm happy to work my day around and work in the evenings so that we can speak to you 
you when it's convenient to you. Um, so scan yourself in or, or um, send me a message via my email um, and it's all completely free to talk to you. As I say, it's a really great scheme. As I said, I've lived here for six years and, and I completely vouch it's a fantastic place to live. So please get in contact. Likewise, if you've just got any questions, then please ask me. Um, get, in the next day or two, we'll send you the webinar out as well. Um, we have to just get it um, cut edited we don't really edit it but you know just get it done in a format that we can send it out then we send it out to you as well and and but as i say feel free to book in or ask any questions in the meantime um so i hope you found that useful um nice speaking to you i will do another webinar i try to do these every three or four weeks um so if anything's changed i will inform you on these webinars um but hopefully i will speak to you and hopefully you've found it useful so um yeah thank you very much for for joining us um it's been really enjoyable and um yeah, wish you all the best and, and hope that we can help you moving forward. So yeah, thank you very much. Take care.